In part one of this tutorial, we've created the stage for hosting our floating button. And in this part, in part two, we're going to create and style the component. So back in my project, I'm going to create a new component. And I'm going to call it float button component. Okay, I don't want to write all this stuff from scratch. So I'm going to copy it and paste it here. And I'm just going to change a couple things. So this is going to be float button. And instead of the template URL, I'm just going to do a template. So it's just going to be code right in here. Okay, so we're going to have a stack layout. And inside we're going to have a label. The label is going to have a class of float button text. And for now, let's just have a text of, uh, oh, plus. That seems to be pretty common. I'm going to close that label out. Also, our stack layout needs a class. We're going to call this one the float button. There's our template. Now we need some styles. So we're going to do inline styles as well here. You can separate all this out to separate files, but since it's a pretty standalone component I, and it's pretty small, I'm going to keep everything in one file. And there are two classes, float button and float button text. So float button text, we're going to make that white and we're going to have a larger than normal font size. 36 and float button that's the stack layout here that contains the label so here we're going to have a, a certain background color and we're going to make it light blue i also want to set the width and the height and we're going to also text align the contents to center and vertical align it to the middle okay we don't need any of this and we're going to call this float button component okay at this point we have a component we can't use it yet. What we need to do is in Angular, we need to register the component with our app module. So let's go in here and import that class that we've just created. And I'm going to put it in this declarations array. Okay, now that it's there, I can close this out and I can go back to my app component and use it here. So let's go ahead and add it here. And we gave it this selector, float button. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so it's all inside the absolute layout. So this float button is going to float on top of the scroll view. Let's take a look at that. I'm actually going to make some space here. Put the emulator here. Okay, not very pretty right now. It's a square, it's ugly, and it's in the top left corner. We want it down here in the bottom right corner, and we want it to be a circle. But our list still scrolls, and the button is floating on top. So it is doing kind of what it's promising to do. Let's go ahead and finish it up. Uh, so while we're here in the app component, I want to move this button to the bottom right corner. So what I'm going to do to do that is wrap it in a stack layout. And now I can position it anywhere I want. And I'm going to give it a class of float button container. Now that it has that class, all I got to do is just paste it here and position it. So margin top, oh, let's say 80%. And margin left, 80%. There it is, now it's in place. Okay, we're not done here quite yet with this app component, but we'll be back shortly to finish it off. We're gonna need a handler here to handle taps. Okay, but first let's finish up the way it looks. Okay, I wanna make this float button circular. So now we have a property called border radius, and I'm gonna make that half of what the width and height is. Okay, there it is, it became a circle. And of course, I have this text align misspelled rather than uh, the semicolon. I have an L here. So our plus is kind of floating off to the side. So let's save that and we'll see our plus move into the right spot. Okay, so uh, we can also make a little adjustment here. You see the float button text is not exactly in the center. It's a little bit lower. So I'm going to say margin top minus four and I can play around with that positioning a little bit. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. In this part two video, we've created the button. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add functionality to the button. So check out part three.